Ding, ding, ding. Engineering change order coming through. In the last video, I walked you through how to take your layout information and turn it into the Gerber, and that's the, the set of files that we need to send to the fab shop in order to get the boards fabricated. And I also showed you how you can use the JLC website in order to do a free DFM on your design. Well, JLC decided to remove that feature. They still do a DFM. In other words, they will tell you whether your board is going to meet their manufacturing requirements. But unfortunately, you have to place the order first, and then they'll get back to you. So I want to, I want to show you an, uh, a two alternative places you can go in order to do a free DFM. But to do that, you have to pay attention to one small change in generating your Gerbers. So here's your layout. Now, it's also really important to keep in mind that the menu items that you have available in Altium, they change depending on what file you have in focus. Right now, I have the layout in focus. If I were to double click on the schematic, then the schematic is in focus. And the menu items, you know, some of the names are the same, but the options that are available are different depending on which file I have in focus. So we want to make sure that we have the layout in focus. And now, of course, we remember we're going to export the Gerbers. So we go to uh, Fabrication Outputs, and we're going to export Gerbers. We're going to do this just like we did before. We identify only those layers that we used in our design. It's really important to not add extra layers that we're not using. It will only end up confusing the fab shop and run the potential risk of including some of the other layers in the copper on your board, which you don't want. So everything is, uh, is correct. These are the, the layers that we want. There's no bottom overlay in our design. We have the keep out layer. We say OK. And now the Gerbers are being generated automatically. And if we go to our folder that has all of the Altium files in it, we have a new folder that says Project Outputs. We double click, and here are those Gerber files that were just created. Next step, of course, next step, of course, is again we highlight the layout, and we have to export the NC drill files. So we go to Fabrication Outputs. We scroll down, and and there are the NC drill files. Now, one important thing we have to pay attention to. In order to use Advanced Circuits DFM, everything here is going to be default, but the very last line here, we need to normally, depending on how you left it, um, this box is unchecked. Really important to make sure that box is checked. We want to generate the EIA binary drill file. This is the .drl. Advanced Circuits is going to look for that DRL file as the NC drill file. So make sure it is in the um, folder. And we look along here, and everything looks fine. So we're going to say OK. And we are asked for the units, and everything is default. We say OK, and we're done. When we open up our project outputs, you'll notice, hey, here is the DRL file. Everything else is real standard. So Here's where we're at. We've got our project outputs. I'm going to turn that into a zip folder. I'm going to send to zip. And of course, what I'm going to do is uh, correct the name for this. I'm going to put Bogatin Gerber. And this is uh, practice board. And I'm going to I'm going to add a date code to it: 2021-01-25. Uh, that's the correct naming structure for the Gerber file. Now, just to make it easier for me, because we're going to be sending that out, I'm going to put that on my desktop. And now I have it available, and I'm going to use that in order to upload to the DFM tools. First step, let's go to Advanced Circuits. And we do a search. And hey, the very first item here, here is Advanced Circuits, and it's the 4pcb.com. So we click on it. We're going to use. They have on the home page, there's a lot of valuable information on their website. Please uh, take your time to browse through here. We're going to use the free DFM checker. You can also find it under products and services. And here's that Gerber file check. They both go to exactly the same place. And so here we're going to use their free um, DFM, Design for Manufacturing Checker. We're going to upload files. And here's where we add our email address. 
We're going to choose the file. And remember, I put it on my desktop. Here on my desktop. Here it is, easy to find. There's the zip. We say OK. We up upload the file. And now it's uploaded. And now we have uh, the opportunity to identify and match the, the file type that Advanced Circus is looking for with the files that are in that zip folder. And so we are going to go down the list and, and we're just going to double check the file. So anything that says select file type, we're going to have to adjust. And if we don't know what it is, the default is going to be drawing or other. So let's see, uh, here is the DRL file. Remember that special one that we generated and Advanced Circuits has automatically identified this as the NC drill file. That's great. Everything else, let's see, bottom copper, drawing, top, here's the top layer. Everything looks great. This one's not identified. We're just going to make that drawing or other. These three down here, we're going to make those drawing or other, drawing or other, drawing or other. There we go. So we've done the identification. I think that's in good shape. It'll tell us if it were not. And then we're going to come down here. And if we typed in uh, our email address and we have already registered for a free account, then it will auto fill in the rest of the information. We're going to have to fill in a lot of these blanks. If at this point we just said, OK, do your check. We come down here and we submit, then it's going to say, uh-oh, you forgot. You have to click this box here, ITARS. This is the US restriction on uh, only US citizens can be involved in uh, uh, parts that are part of the uh, defense industry. And so we have to be sure to identify all the boards we're doing are not ITARS restricted. And now if we submit at this point, we see if we go up to the top, hey, you forgot some things. And so it's going to be really important to fill in the rest of the blanks. And here's how we do that. Part number is arbitrary. I just made up a part number. Revision number, arbitrary. I'm going to use one. Layer count kind of wraps around, and I'm going to use two layers. The x dimensions in inches and y dimensions doesn't really matter. I'm going to put in dummy number of three. And the rest, I'm going to leave uh, blank. I'm not going to fill them in. As long as ITARS is selected here, I'm not going to add the quantity. That's what you do after you place the order. And we say submit. And look at that. We're done. It took all of our information. And it says, hey, uh, we're going to send you an email with the results of the free DFM uh, quote. Here are all the pieces of information in there. It read all the files. We're good to go. And within about an hour or so, you're going to get an email back from Advanced Circuits that has links in it to uh, open up a web page a web page on their server with the results of your DFM. Let's take a look at one of the examples of that. This is one of the emails I get back from Advanced Circuits with links about the information of the DFM. And so we browse through, we get the plots, and here it is. Click to view DFM results for that job. So I click that link, opens up their web page browser, and look at that. It passed, no showstoppers. If there were problems, it would identify the specific problems. You can go back and you can fix them. And likewise, hey, no problems automatically fixed. This is good confirmation that at least the uh, design files pass the DFM for advanced circuits. And that says there are no obvious problems, there are no missing files. Doesn't mean it's going to work with JLC PCB, but there's a really high probability that it will. Let's look at the second way of testing our, our Gerbers. Let's go to PCB way. PCB way. Dot com. This is another uh, China uh, internet circuit board fab shop that also provides a free DFM. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to do an instant quote. And so we're going to just, again, this is in, we're going to put in the dimensions of the board. This is in millimeters. So as long as it's less than 100 millimeters on a side, we're going to choose the number of parts. Two layers, we say quote now. And now it's ready to calculate. Now, it's really important, if you haven't already, you want to um, sign into your account. You'll have to create a free account. And uh, it's based on the free account that you'll be able to uh, upload a Gerber and have it uh, be checked. So we, we filled in the initial information here. 
everything is going to be default. And now we say, OK, save to cart. And now is the time when we're asked to upload the Gerber. So we add the Gerber file. And remember, I kept mine on my desktop, so it's really easy to find. There it is. Upload. It's uploaded. That's great. And now the last step is, OK, submit the order. We're not paying for it. What we're doing is uploading it into their server so that they can do a quick check, a DFM, to make sure that they've got all the files, they can read them, and they meet their manufacturing requirements. They're going to send us an email back if it passes. And then they're going to say, OK, it passed. Why don't you buy it? Of course, we're not going to go ahead and buy it. You can if you like. They have very good prices, very good delivery. Uh, but our boards are going to be fabricated by JLC. Let's take a look at what one of those emails looks like. Here's an example of an email that came back from PCBWay based on one of the files that I uploaded. It says, hey, thanks for placing the order. We didn't really place the order. We didn't buy it. We just got it set up. Now your order's review status is as follows. Here's this order number. And look, it passed review. That means it's ready to place the order. If it didn't pass, they will sometimes uh, provide some information about what was wrong with it, what was too close, what was too small, why it didn't meet their manufacturing requirements. Either of these sources are a good source to use in order to verify the quality of your Gerber files. You don't have to use both of them. Either one is perfectly fine. It's a good safety check so you can catch any errors as early in the design cycle as possible. If you have a problem with your Gerber, you forgot a file, or some structures were too close, and when I submit your order, JLC will not manufacture it. It will take a day or two before I get a note back, it may take a day before I find it in my email, and then I send you the, the note back saying, hey, you got this error, you have to fix it. And so maybe we've wasted three or four days already, and you have to make the change, resubmit it, and I'm not going to order your board for another week. And so you've already lost typically five, six, seven days in the process of getting your board submitted. And that's why you want to find these errors before you give them to your boards to me so that you have a high chance of getting them through JLC and getting them back in a timely manner.